Welcome to the fight game with Ice Water and Puma. And we want to first start off with talking about the Fendora Ocampo fight last weekend. Um, any thoughts on that fight before I chime in? Yeah, well, I mean, you kind of kind of expected Ocampo to try to come in and, and be strong and be physical with uh, Fundora. Uh, Fundora takes chances. But uh, during that fight, you could just tell that Ocampo uh, was, was just really, Campo was just really overmatched. Uh, he had tried to come inside and just to a point where the referee became too much of a point of emphasis in that fight where he was into the point saying, are oh, you not showing me enough? And he tried to find the corner of Campos uh, for too much water on the, on the ring mat and says, yeah. we need to take part of their purse. I'm like, you're doing too much. If you want to stop the fight, stop the fight, but all that extra stuff, but getting back to the fight, Fandora is a different type of uh, fighter. He's very tall. Uh, he should be on the outside with a jab, but he, he's, he's unconventional when he does that, where he goes inside. He likes to fight like a, a little dude inside, a small guy. And he, and he loves to just bang with people. And he does that because most people can't get to him. And I don't think he's fought anybody really that, except for, now take that back. I want to give that back to uh, Lubin, really mm -hmm. gave it to him. But he found a way to outlast Lubin, and he was really slugging with Lubin. But I think um, to this point, besides Lubin, he hasn't really fought anybody like that. But you can't blame him. He's the mandatory now so uh, for somebody. And uh, he's just fighting whoever they put in front of him. But kudos to Fandora for, for a win. One of the things that, that, that my critique of Fandora is that he likes to fight in the inside, but he doesn't need to. And he has the reach, um, he has a jab, he doesn't use the jab a lot. And I'm, I was thinking during the fight when I was watching it, it's just gonna take one good solid punch on the side of the head or, or, or by the jaw to just kind of just lay him out like a, a big timber, timber tree. And I, I, I was just looking at it like, why is he insisting on just going inside? He has the reach, he has the advantage. Uh, is he trying to prove something? Is he trying to prove that he's this tough guy that, you know, whatever fight style you want to fight, um, he can, you know, he can kind of match it. I just don't understand because this is not the first time I've seen him do this when he has the clear advantage and reach um, and he has a nice jab, but it just seems like he won't use it. I, I didn't hear his, his corner kind of saying, hey, you need to use the jab more and you need to keep this guy at bay because Ocamp o Ocampo was, was really kind of coming in trying to throw some haymakers at, at a certain point of the fight to try to get him out of there. And it was just missing. And I was thinking it just takes one good fighter. If he steps up in competition, it takes one good fighter to just catch him inside uh, a uppercut or something just to kind of just lay him out. And um, can you explain to me why he, he does this? Well, Fundora says, said, one, he's young. He feels kind of like invincible. Uh, two, he said he likes to give uh, provide excitement to the fans. And one way that he can provide excitement is get in there and, and, and throw, throw, throw punches toe to toe with somebody, despite the fact that not using the uh, advantages he may have from a physical standpoint. So he likes after a while, he likes to start just throwing bombs with guys. And he's been able to get away with it. And he's young, he's having fun and probably having the time of his life. Probably has uh, uh, achieved more than he ever thought he would. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's where he's at right now. But then again, like I said, he's a mandatory and he's calling out the names of, uh, calling out the Charlo name. And I'm like, that's dangerous. Yeah, because if he fights some guy like that, who has some power in his punch, he's gonna be laid out on, on his back. Because mm -hmm. I, I just don't understand if you got an advantage. I understand you want to be able to be well-rounded as a fighter, but if you don't need to use that and you can win a fight easily with, with the reach and the jab and, and setting up some things to get a guy out of there, then you just do that. Um, I don't want to, you know, um, you got to fight for yourself. Sometimes fighting for the fans gets you in trouble. I, I, I truly believe that. I agree with that 100%. But like I said, he's young. It's been working for him so far. So I guess he said, you know what? I'm going to keep going with it until I have to change or somebody stops me. So, so far, so good, I guess. Okay. 
Uh, the next fight we're going to talk about is Robert Hellenis uh, versus Deontay Wilder in the Barclays Center uh, this this weekend. I saw Robert Hellenis watching some fights of his on YouTube, and I'm just thinking that um, Deontay Wilder is going to have some quick work <laughs> with the uh, the knockout artist. Is going to have some quick work with Hellenis. I know Hellenis is uh, one of those fighters who talks tough. He's 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 a tough guy, but I think this is uh, Deontay Wilder's way to get back in the, the upper echelon of the heavyweight division. And I, I see him using this fight to get back to, to fighting some of the, um, the well-known names or the household names in the heavyweight division. Yeah, well, I, I think it could be a, a nice little tune-up fight. Uh, Helenus has been in the uh, camp with, uh, with Deontay Wilder before, so he's been like a sparring partner. So he has an idea what's going on with them. Uh, some people think that that could work uh, against uh, Deontay Wilder. But I think you're right. I think he wants to come in, make sure everything's working properly. Uh, Helenus has been, is a tough guy. He fights strong. He's beat a couple guys recently. So it's no pushover like that. But uh, we want to see if, uh, the, what, what De Deontay Wilder are we going to get, right? Some people mentioned about the second coming of his career. So it's like, uh, is he going to box more? Is he going to be patient? Or he's just going to go straight in and just try to knock the hell out of some people? not gotten the hell out of his opponent. So we don't know yet, but I think that's what makes it interesting. But it's it's clearly a tune-up, but uh, that's what he wants to do, make sure he's on pace. And then uh, things will start to unravel from there where you'll start to see uh, DeAndre Walter uh, move up uh, if he's successful with this win, move up uh, and face some stiffer competition. Now, does he have the same uh, trainer uh, that he had in the last fight with uh, Tyson Fury? Yes, he does. He has so, the same trainer. Um, I'm I mean, not yeah. sure if he's going to learn anything because it's, I think his trainer said after the fight, you know, he's kind of unteachable at this particular point. He's going to fight the way he's going to fight. And if he comes in the fight, in my opinion, if he comes in a fight like that, then um, he may get by uh, Helenus, but I don't think he's going to get by some of the other fighters in, in, in this division, to be honest. Well, you know, they did try to do, he did box a little bit more in the last fight. Right. Right. Yeah. right. And Malik Scott tried to change some things, but he knows what his, what his strength is and his power is. But I think part of it is, and I said this from the beginning, I said, and I, I think people are shortchanging the, the talent and the, the, the ring savvy of Tyson Fury. Yes. Okay. I really believe that. Um, I think Tyson Fury is Deontay Wilder's kryptonite. I think he understands with uh, Sugar Hill uh, in the corner, right, of, uh, of, of, of Fury, understand what it takes, the strategy to kind of wear down Deontay Wilder. And I'm not sure if anybody else understands that. There might be some exceptions to the rule, but I think instead of just saying that Deontay Wilder is not really the guy or not as strong, I think you really got to pay attention to give credit to what Fury is able to do. And I think Fury could do that to almost anybody. That's why he's the main guy. He's shown us that when he fought that guy three times. Nobody else would ever get into the ring with, with, uh, with Wilder three times. And not only that, but able to win. But I think uh, Wilder, for the most part, um, can, and he might not be, he might still be Wild Wilder, right? We might, he might, you might be right. But I don't see anybody else uh, coming in and, giving him that work like that. I mean, I might be wrong, but I want to see it. That's why I want to see him come back. If he knocks the heck out of Helena's, that's one thing. Then he might take on uh, 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 Ruiz. That wouldn't be a bad fight. So uh, we'll see. And Josh was a whole different story, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, because these fights with the heavyweights, the uh, upper echelon to the heavyweights need to happen um, to, to get this division back activated. Um, because I thought uh, the uh, Tyson Fury Wilder, the last fight was, uh, you know, goes back to the the classics of heavyweight fights that we, we used to see. And uh, I think it was uh, everybody left there satisfied after they saw that fight, that it was well worth seeing some heavyweights just bang each other. So I'm looking, I'm looking for Wilder to kind of um, what can he add to his game to be a better fighter? That's what I'm looking for in this fight. I know, I, I kind of feel he's going to win this fight easily, but can he show me some skills that make me more confident in his skills going forward to fight some of the, the, the bigger name fights? Uh, we have the rematch with Devin Haney and George Cambosis Jr. And um, um, 
Matter of fact, I'm going to predict that Devin Haney will uh, it'll be a TKO. I don't think this will go the, the full length uh, of the fight because I, I saw this guy um, in videos, him working out. He is chiseled. He is ready to go. And um, he's one of those fighters that when they put this clause in um, to fight the rematch in the same place, he was like, I'll just do it again. And so here we are again. Uh, I'm looking forward to this fight. Um, and he seems very confident. He seems ready. Um, what are your thoughts on this fight? Yeah, uh, Devin Haney, they have a style. Now that they've seen Cambosis up close and personal, they know what he's what he's about. Uh, Cambosis, for some reason or another, thought he could outbox Devin Haney, and that was really the wrong strategy because he ended up chasing him all night long. I think in the second fight, if George Cambosis Jr. wants to be successful, he's going to have to uh, – get dirty. He's going to get mean, going to get nasty, going to get physical with Devin Haney if he can catch him. So he's got to change the way he fight. I think he's going to have to be more aggressive. He's going to have to come after him and find a way to keep him up against the ropes or at least when he's up against the ropes, he has to go work to the body and, uh, and then work, work to the head, you know, body head. And uh, there have been some things that some people have said in the past that they're not strong. Not, they're, not as, they're not certain how strong Devin Haney's body is. So that has been some rumors before, but you never could tell because nobody's really done it. But there's been some questions about that. So if Cambosa is going to do it, he's going to have to make it a fight where he's close to him, uh, maybe up against the ropes, try to make it more physical and make uh, Devin Haney engage, which I don't think he really wants to do. I think he'll box and move around and uh, try to elude him. So it's, he's going to have to find a way to do it because the way that he tried to do it last time, as far as running around and boxing mm -hmm. and trying to dance, it's not going to work. So with that being said, if he wants to make a difference and wants to make this a fight, you clearly, he clearly cannot outbox Devin Haney. If you try it again, you're going to get the same result. Yeah, that's why I think this fight is going to be uh, quicker than, than the first fight because – um, he got a little taste of Cambosis. It didn't seem like he was intimidated, scared at all. He's, he's fighting in his home, um, at, at his home. And so I think that he's not going to let it go to the scorecards this time. Um, he's going to take him out so it doesn't go to the scorecards and it'll be a technical knockout. I'm predicting that. Maybe in the 10th or 11th round, to be honest. Um, any predictions on the Wilder fight? Uh, yeah, I think Wilder stops him in... Uh, six, six rounds. As Ali said, five. <laughs> I'll give Helena's five. Um, I wasn't really impressed with him. He's a t he, he seems like be a tough guy, but I just see um, uh, Deontay just overpowering him. And um, Deontay kind of reminds me of uh, Evander Holyfield. So Evander Holyfield will come in with a game plan and you hit him upside the head one good time and the game plan went out the window and he was just going to slug it out <laughs> and just beat you. Carissa Shields, uh, her fight comes up this weekend. What do you predict for that fight? Wow. Uh, this is the fight she's been wanting. I, I think Carissa Shields uh, has been looking for a, a challenge for a long time. So, you know, because you hear all these women they bring in and they talk about they had this record or whatever. But uh, this is probably the last official loss that she has. Even though she was an amateur, she lost to Marshall as an amateur. And uh, she wants to prove to the world that, because I think also, too, Marshall had mentioned that uh, she said something to the effect that Carissa Shields has pillow hands and she does, she throws soft punches. And what you're doing is you're just really raising the bar for uh, for for Clarissa Shields to really come after. She believes that she's the greatest uh, woman. Uh, I just hope she can keep her composure because I know how bad she wants to hurt this woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she wants to knock her in the next week, but I hope she remains professional and still uh, use, uses the talents that got her to this point and realize too that it had to be a first round knockout take a little time and you wear it down and then you take her down and knock her out. That's still good enough. I just hope she's able to do that. And Marshall's no, no joke. Marshall knows she's uh, getting under her skin. I'm just Marshall, Marshall's getting under her skin and just saying crazy. She wants Carissa Shields to be out of her mind 
Right. In the ring. She wants to throw her off her game because I think she really knows what can happen. They, right. They've been waiting on this a long time, and she really wants to try to do everything she can to get her off her game to uh because you know when Carissa Shields is focused, she's a, a real problem. Right. Um I I look for Carissa Shields to win this fight. Uh, I don't know if it'll be easy as, as some of her past fights, but I know um I wanted to ask you whether or not you think she's going back to MMA because she she kind of got beaten in M- MMA and not because of her boxing skills, she just didn't have a ground game or hadn't developed the ground game um in her short stint there. Uh, but I, I think she'll make easy work. I think this is her comfort zone right now. Uh, I think um, this is where she wants to be. But do you think she'll go back to MMA after a few fights? I think it's all about money, bro. Mm-hmm. I do. I mean, unfortunately, she doesn't really have, I mean, unfortunately, she's too big to fight some of the smaller weights, right? You know, that we saw one of that great fight back in April. I think she's too big for those young ladies. Uh, so I think if she does go to MMA, it's for the money. Right. Because she's going to get all kind of money for that. Uh, if you're looking for a big fight in boxing, this might be it. Then what are you going to do after that? Right. So it depends on how she feels about the money. I think it'll be a strictly financial decision, which means she might have to get in the gym and start working on that MMA. If that's what she wants to do. But it's a tough switch over, man. I mean, I, I don't think it's easier for boxing for the MMA guys to go to boxing, but it's damn sure a lot harder to become a MMA fighter trying to become a boxer because there's so much you got to learn and do. Like you said, you might have all the hands in the world, I love Nate Diaz, but you don't have no uh, ground game. Yeah. You, you're a fish out of water. Yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of sharks out there. <laughs> uh, any other stories that we need to uh, stay on? Um, yeah, uh, in the undercard, you have, I think we talk, We need to talk about Caleb Plant and Anthony Durrell, and Durrell, the dog Durrell. So, uh, that's on the undercard of the Wilder Helena's uh, fight. That actually might be the showstopper because we know what Caleb Plan is. Caleb Plan is uh, the guy that gave uh, Canelo Alvarez all he wanted as a boxing lesson for a while till he got caught. And uh, Anthony, and you know, the dog uh, Darrell is a veteran that comes at you, comes forward. Uh, they don't like each other. No. So it's going to be very interesting from the standpoint of, uh, I think Caleb Plant, this is an opportunity for him to kind of show what kind of talent he is, right? So granted, it may not be on the Canelo line and he may not get that fight again, but if he wants to continue to be a force in his division where he's at, he has to win this type of fight and he has to do it convincingly over a veteran. You know, the one thing about Darrell and the whole Darrell family, they're veteran fighters. They don't quit. They don't back up. They don't run or anything like that too. So Caleb Plant, if he is really as good as he says he is and wants to show that, he needs to win this fight convincingly. That's what I was going to ask you is uh, because I know uh, Plant is, is talking about he wants to rematch with Carnello. Do you think he gets that within the next two years? Nah, I don't. Because I, I think there's – and I'm glad you brought that up because this, this, is, this is juicy. I love this. I heard some talk about it, but it makes a lot of sense now. Because what we're hearing is – uh, the reason why I say he doesn't get the rematch because there's nothing. What else can Plant do to to rectify what he did? He got knocked out by Canelo. He got stopped. So you fight him again. Why does he deserve that? They're saying now that uh, uh, the the zone Eddie Hearn's group is having trouble. They're not sure if Canelo how long much longer they're going to be doing uh, work with Canelo. Wow. And from the standpoint of they wanted Canelo to sound like a three. He wants to fight like a three fight deal. But the problem of it is the zone is saying Canelo wanted to fight lesser uh, talent. And they're like, we cannot afford to basically pay him $35 million to fight a guy that's not going to really give him any problems. Right. So that's why they, they're they saying that the mandatory uh, with Baval, uh, if Baval wins this fight, you might see. Uh, Canelo fighting him again, trying to get that fight. But the other part of it too is PBC came up with a, a, a number, an astronomical number for uh, for uh, Canelo to fight uh, Charlo and then Men- Menavidez, and he turned it down. He turned both of those down. Are you surprised? But the, yeah, well, no, but the problem of it is if the zone is not 
willing to be the safe haven as they have been in the past. The only way Canelo is going to have to really come full circle and fight unless he goes higher is come through the gates and fight them. Some of the guys, the Benavides as of the world, the Andres, whoever, which he won't fight, or or Charlo. Because now the 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 level of talent, the 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 places to fight, the people to fight is shrinking. Yes. You know, you've already beat all these other guys. You dominate them now. So if you really want to continue with your legacy and really get that money you're talking about. You're gonna to have to bunker down and fight the fights that people fight the fights that people really want to see. Right. Be there, Charlo, uh, some other folks. You gotta come come to it, come with it. Because he's now that's avoiding that. And that's what I've been saying all these years. He's been avoiding that for years. And even to the point where if you wait a little bit longer, you might be looking at some Earl Spence Jr. type situation. I so, know Spence said he would fight him. He would yeah. go up and fight him. Yeah, she probably might 154, 160. But so, but I guess the point with all the I'm saying is Canelo's running out of places to go for people to fight. Yeah. So especially, like I said, if the zone tells you we can't afford just to let you fight anybody and pay you all that money, you're going to have to rise, you know, raise up your level of competition. And they're saying to the point where if you can make that money with somebody else for $35 million or whatever it may be for a lesser known fighter, then go ahead. We're not going to stand in your way. We can't afford to do that. We can't take that in. We cannot, and they'll let somebody else do it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But to answer your question again about Plant, I think he's already conquered Plant. What, what purpose would it serve? Unless they feel like, oh, well, maybe we can get you a little more money and pay you 35 minutes to fight Plant. I don't know. The only way I can see that happen is Plant has to have some really impressive wins over, over some big-name fighters to, to kind of say, okay, listen, you know, I wasn't ready last time, but, you know, I want this guy and keep calling him out. Last question. Um, Spence Crawford, done? I wouldn't say it's done. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, what I find interesting is I don't think it's going to happen this year. Okay. I've heard uh, somebody actually called me and said, hey, they're kind of close to it, a little closer than I am right now. And they said, uh, I got the word that it's not happening this year. Okay. But a lot of people are upset and angry about it. but the buzz is, that's the buzz. You're talking about it. You just mentioned it. People want to know. So even if they're not going to have the fight this year, they're going to fight. They just have to work this out. So maybe if it doesn't fight, uh, they don't fight this year. Also, too, it's very difficult to have that fight right before Thanksgiving. You got football going on, a lot of stuff going on. It's kind of a tough time to have that fight, although they could People pull it off. would watch that fight. They would they, I know they would watch it, but I'm just saying it's, it's, it's going to be very busy. Basketball starting up, so a lot going on. But people would watch the fight, but I think that's what they know, that no matter what, let's say they don't do, they don't fight this year. The longer they wait, the bigger it gets. Yeah. The bigger yeah. it gets. And that's what they want. I'm just hoping that they don't wait till they get to the, the senior tour to, to nah, fight because nah, you nah. saw the Pacquiao, Mayweather. It's like that that fight didn't need to happen. Um, you saw so many fights that, you know, um, yeah. I remember watching the Roy Jones Trinidad fight. And right after the first round, I'm like, this was 10 years too late. It was awful. It was awful. I yeah. tell you what, I went back and I did something. I tell you, this is what you should do. For those Roy Jones Jr. fans, right? I never saw this fight and I watched it two days ago. You want to see a fight and you want to see the uh, the emergence of Roy Jones Jr., go to YouTube, if I can say that. Go to YouTube and watch Roy Jones Jr. versus uh, uh, Mr. Tony. Yeah. James, James Tony. Yeah, that was a good fight. That yes, was, I never. I heard about it. I never saw it. Yeah. yeah, my goodness, my goodness, Roy yeah. Jones Jr. Yeah, yeah, he showed you he was the real deal. Yeah, he's ice water. I'm Puma, and this is my game.